Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and we're back with some latest space updates. Firstly, we'll talk about SpaceX nearing the climax of building Starship's launch tower. Secondly, a look back on SpaceX's retired fairing recovery fleet. Thirdly, a quick glance of upcoming Polar Starlink launch. And lastly, we'll talk about SpaceX and ULA launching the future satellites for the Space Development Agency. Let's start with our first update. SpaceX is gearing up the construction of the launch tower in the past few weeks. Several other events have happened, including Starbase upgrade plans launched by Musk. Now the new addition to the events is initiation of turning Starship launch tower into a Mechazilla to make it capable of catching boosters descending from the sky. After stacking several prefabricated tower sections and gathering major components for building robotic arm, SpaceX now seems to be almost prepared to begin transforming the vast launch tower into Mechazilla. Musk has earlier stated that plans for Earth-bound Super Heavy Booster recovery have changed. Instead of landing on legs, it would be caught in the sky. Musk has also tweeted, The Starship launch tower that catches the giant rocket booster is basically Mechazilla. SpaceX is now implying what Musk has stated earlier. Just a lapse of time after Musk stated that several sections of the robotic arm were noticed to be arriving at the Boca Chica, Texas facility. According to a report, SpaceX teams have also assembled some of those sections on a concrete pad which was earlier used as landing zones for starships. The report says SpaceX teams are currently working on a larger structure of assembled metal tubes, which is possibly the main catching part of arms and another black structure being made out of prefabricated components consisting of crane parts and props. It may be used for the lower arm section. Starlink Launch Tower stands approximately 440 feet in height. Installation procedures of the ninth Launch Tower prefabricated sections going on. On completion, the tower will reach its final 475 feet height. According to some sources, it's quite plausible that SpaceX may permanently attach some sort of crane atop the launch tower, which may help in stacking during orbital launches. But this feature solely relies on the work efficiency of the robotic arm. The vertical rails in the launch tower were noticed more than a month ago. According to some reports, SpaceX may use those rails for running elevator-like vehicles outside the tower. This component may possibly be attached with large arms capable of catching, stacking the stages together, and fueling the Starship system. SpaceX has outfitted the final tower section with massive and strong pulley mechanisms. It's estimated that these massive pulleys will be used for controlling the ascent and descent of arms attached to the elevator-like vehicle. Before we move to the next segment, we'd like you to know about our sponsor, NordPass. Having so many types of online accounts to manage, very few of us can actually remember all the passwords. Different websites are having different complexity criteria. And if we maintain similar passwords, the chance of compromising security becomes very high. Also, there are many online accounts we don't visit regularly and end up resetting the passwords following complicated processes like answering questions and generating OTPs. So here comes NordPass as a new age password manager, which is reliable and readily available to solve this problem. Beside passwords, you can also save your credit card details or any sensitive personal information safely in the online vault, which you can access via a single master password. As it's built based on zero-knowledge architecture, NordPass also does not know your sensitive information as well. They have an award-winning 24-7 customer care support for you with 30 days money-back policy. So hurry up and give it a try. For a limited time, grab the two-year NordPass Premium Plan with 50% off at nordpass.com slash engineering today or use code engineering today. Plus, you get an additional four months for free. Let's move to our second update. It's been more than three months that SpaceX has retired their payload fairing recovery fleet. Along with the remarkable milestone of reusing rockets, SpaceX has also achieved the milestone of recovering and reusing their rocket fairings. Payload fairings and rockets are generally used as a protective shell to save the payloads from atmospheric friction during ascent. In the space history, no company has ever thought of recovering a fairing and was usually discarded into the ocean after a single use. SpaceX was the first to think about it and make it a reality. 
The high speed winds would make the fairings tumble, so SpaceX used nitrogen thrusters to control them. SpaceX also made the fairings installed with GPS equipment along with a parafoil, a parachute to slow descent to make the fairing descent much safer. In 2017, Mr. Stephen, an offshore supply vessel, joined SpaceX's fleet as a recovery ship. The vessel was equipped with four large arms, and the net attached to them covered an area of 40,000 square feet. SpaceX developed this vessel as a movable catcher for their fairing recovery program. In 2019, Elon Musk renamed the vessel as Miss Tree. In June 2019, SpaceX made history by catching a fairing on Miss Tree after a Falcon Heavy launch. In August 2019, SpaceX caught another fairing half with Miss T. SpaceX introduced a new vessel to support Miss Tree. It was Go Miss Chief. SpaceX teams equipped it with four arms and a large net. Both the boats and SpaceX's recovery fleet performed well in catching fairings, but at a very low rate. SpaceX also managed to recover both the fairing halves of a single launch with this duo. Though SpaceX got some success in fairing recovery, out of 50 attempts, only 9 of them were totally successful, so the success rate was quite low. Arms of the boats get easily damaged and rusted by the harsh weather in the seas, often if the ship has recovered the fairing, but the net gets ripped, causing the fairing to splash in the ocean. Owing to these circumstances, SpaceX shifted their focus from dry recovery to wet recovery and decided to use Go Searcher and Go Navigator for fishing out the fairings. The fairing recovery fleet retired. Though they've gone, they'll still be remembered for creating such milestones. Let's move to our third update. SpaceX was quiet in Falcon launches for nearly a month since the June 30th launch. It was quite unusual in SpaceX's stormy launch cadence. Last on the 30th of June, SpaceX successfully completed their latest Falcon 9 launch. It was the second dedicated transporter mission, and it deployed several small satellites of different clients and three Starlink satellites. But recently, SpaceX has planned to launch their Starlink mission, L-29, from the West Coast on the 10th of August, 2021. This Starlink launch from the West Coast will be known as Starlink 2-1. According to some recent reports, this new launch may start the building of a new constellation shell, layers of satellites around Earth. So it seems the SpaceX Falcon storm will begin again. Recently, Elon Musk has stated that by 2022, SpaceX will start deploying Starlink V2 satellites. Musk has further said these V2 satellites will have optical interlinks to connect with each satellite. Some reports say that SpaceX's Starlink V1.5 satellites would be near same to existing V1 satellites and are installed with laser links. After successfully launching several Starlink satellites in mid-inclination equatorial orbits, SpaceX now seems to be aiming at constructing polar constellations. Let's move to our last update. The Space Development Agency, a part of the U.S. Defense Department, is working on a project named Transport Layer. Transport Layer is a large constellation of small communication satellites deployed in low Earth orbit. The main work of this project is to intercommunicate and relay data to the military units. According to a recent report, the upcoming launch contracts of the agency for the Transport Layer project will be given either to SpaceX or United Launch Alliance. In 2020, SpaceX and ULA were selected as the NSSL Phase 2 launch providers for the time period of 2022 to 2027, and the missions will be given to them on a yearly basis throughout the period. According to the Space Development Agency, the launch contracts will be given under the National Security Space Launch Program, NSSL, backed by the U.S. Space Force. Maximum of the payloads launched under the NSSL program are military and intelligence agency satellites. With the Tranche 1 project, SDA would be the first national security space launch program customer to create the largest constellations of small satellites in low Earth orbit under them. The agency said, SD now intends to procure launch services through the USSF NSSL Phase 2 contract. Accordingly, it is anticipated that the contractor procured launch services language will be removed from the final RFP request for proposals. 
The agency at first stated that for the Transport Layer 1 tranche project, they will grant the satellite prime contractors to obtain the launch services under the commercial contracts. But on the 26th of July, 2021, the agency stated that Space Force's NSSL program will now control the launch service acquisition. In December last year, the agency had awarded SpaceX a contract worth $150.4 million to launch their first 28 satellites by 2022 and 2023. Out of those 28 satellites, 20 were data relay satellites and the remaining 8 were missile warning satellites. The agency plans to start launching Transport Layer Tranche 1 in 2024. Report says nearly 150 satellites will be launched for this project. By late 2021, the agency will bid for this project. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.